Hey, what's happening, guys? What is going on? Uh, good morning, everybody. You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. Today is Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing kind of the daily rundown, talking about the markets, talking about some business news, uh, where the economy is headed, housing markets, and uh, a number of other topics. Uh, before we get into things, shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Refersion.com. Link in the description box below. Refersion is an affiliate management uh, platform. If you have a Shopify store, if you have a big commerce store, a WooCommerce store, uh, check out Refersion. Refersion allows you to set up an affiliate program. Your affiliates can create links to specific products on your website, specific pages on your website, uh, turn those into affiliate links and have their links tracked so that they can earn money uh, on the traffic and sales that they send your way. Uh, also, if you guys are affiliates yourselves, uh, affiliate or affiliate Refersion in the past couple of years has rolled out their own affiliate network, very similar to uh, 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 like share a sale or a cj.com. Uh, if you have a blog, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have a, a you know, a, a bunch of social media accounts that follow a certain niche and you're looking for products or businesses to promote, you can join Refersion as an affiliate. Uh, you can shop their affiliate network, find products and find companies that you think would appeal to your audience uh, and join those affiliate programs through there. One of the things I like about Refersion from the affiliate side of things is, uh, you know, you have one login to get into all the different affiliate accounts uh, as far as affiliates that use Refersion. So a uh, link will be in the description box below. Check them out. Uh, let's hop into today's news. So uh, yesterday, markets uh, markets didn't do a whole lot. Uh, Dow would finish down about a quarter percent. Uh, NASDAQ finished up a little over half a percent. Uh, top cryptos are kind of trading sideways, uh, you know, some down a half a percent, some up a quarter percent. Uh, let's kind of start with um, some, uh, I guess you could say tech news. Uh, last week, Microsoft retired Internet Explorer. It discontinued it from all devices and all operating systems. Uh, kind of funny, my grandpa was calling me up. My grandpa's 92. He's got a, a little computer in their den. Uh, and, you know, he likes kind of sending emails to his friends and kind of messing around on AOL, still uses AOL. Uh, but he called me up and his uh, computer wasn't working, so I had to go over there and download Chrome from. But uh, last week, Microsoft retired Internet Explorer. This week, however, Microsoft rolled out an all-new AI-powered version of Microsoft Edge uh, and Bing for mobile users. I think I talked about this maybe a week or two back. Uh, at the time, I tried it out and it wasn't working. Apparently, you can't just go on Bing.com. Uh, you actually have to download the Microsoft Edge or the Bing app. Uh, but apparently, what this will do, it will uh, allow... Uh, it will allow users to ask simple or complex questions and receive answers with citations. Uh, you know, everything we hear about these days is AI, AI, ChatGPT, AI art, ChatGPT. Um, what uh, what they're all what Microsoft is also doing, they're implementing uh, ChatGPT or AI uh, into Skype where users can users or groups uh, can ask questions and have those questions answered for the entire group to see. Uh, next, we got some social media news. Uh, social media engagement uh, hits an all time low on all social media platforms except for TikTok. You know, that's kind of weird. It seems like people are using social media more than ever, uh, although we do see a lot of people have kind of soured on Facebook over the years. Uh, even though Instagram has been hot for a number of years, people seem to be even be kind of tiring of Instagram. Uh, Pinterest is kind of old news. You know, I think most people don't even consider YouTube to be a social media platform or a social network anymore. Uh, over the past three years, engagement rates have fallen on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, posting frequency is also down. Posting frequency this year on Facebook and Instagram is down 20%. Uh, the one thing that does seem to be doing good on Instagram is Reels. Uh, Reels now rule Instagram. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you are a social media marketer, if you have a brand, if you have a Shopify store, uh, it's almost a must that you're on TikTok these days. You know, I'm not a big fan of TikTok. I kind of hate TikTok, uh, but it's a place you have to be. Uh, next story, one in six retirees are thinking about returning to work. Um, you know, this is kind of funny. Over the years, I've talked a lot about the FIRE movement, uh, financial independence, retiring early. Uh, there's all different types of FIRE. You have lean FIRE, which is like a really frugal FIRE. Uh, you have coast FIRE, which is essentially people who have uh, enough money saved for retirement but can't live off that money today. So some people might get a job as, uh, say, a barista, a low-stress job. Uh, maybe they'll give you health insurance. Uh, you need some money coming in, but your retirement is pretty much set. Uh, there's fat fire for rich people. Uh, but even among, and you know, one of the concerns with uh, fire, financial independence, retiring early, uh, has always been, you know, what happens if markets go crazy? What happens if inflation gets really bad? Uh, I think a lot of people who have done the financial re uh, independence retiring early uh, have realized that, you know, the 4% rule is great. The Trinity study was good. Uh, but with inflation like we're seeing right now, 
um, it may not work. And, and this story wasn't even about people who have retired early. This story was actually just about elderly people who retired. Uh, but one in six retirees are thinking about returning to work. Uh, well, some people do report they're either lonely or bored. The vast majority of the reasons people were returning to work or thinking about returning to work uh, was because of money reasons, financial reasons, and inflation. So another interesting story yesterday from the Wall Street Journal, uh, more adults are moving in with their children at younger ages. So this is kind of crazy, right? Like in some recent videos, we've talked about how more millennials than ever are living at home. Millennials, you know, 20 to 40, whatever it is, uh, something like 25% of them are living at home. I know Gen Z, over 50% of them are living at home, but they're obviously a lot younger. Uh, but now we're also seeing that a lot of adults are moving in with their children at younger ages. Um, so, you know, kind of what this just looks like to me is uh, people are struggling with this economy. Uh, inflation is hurting people old and young and uh, people are, are relying on family. So, you know, if, if the parents are doing OK and the kid's struggling, the kid might move in with the parents. Uh, we t also talked about another story the other day where a lot of young people were moving in with their folks to uh, to be able to save up money for homes, save up down payments for homes. Uh, but we're also seeing older people who are struggling and the kids are doing well. Uh, the adults are oftentimes moving in with the kids. Uh, we got the Fed minutes yesterday. Uh, if you guys just watched the Fed minutes or, or saw any of the Fed minutes, uh, chances of the Fed reversing rates and pivoting this year is next to zero percent. Uh, it'll likely be 2025 before we see uh, this two percent inflation that the Fed is chasing. And I think in a video last week, I had talked about like at the rate that inflation is coming down, if you even believe it's coming down, uh, it'll be about 2026 before inflation is down to two percent. Um, but, uh, the fed may actually be, you know, this fed is kind of signaling that they may wind up being satisfied with 2.8%. So, um, you know, inflation is, is very likely to continue to get worse. Um, and even once the fed quote unquote reaches their goal, uh, it may wind up being 2.8% inflation instead of 2% inflation. Uh, and it's pretty clear the fed is losing control. Uh, CNBC article, the feds resolved to fighting inflation with rate hikes. Uh, it'll, uh, in March, we'll either see a quarter point or a 50 cent. 50 basis point rate hike. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't really matter because both of those numbers are kind of peanuts con uh, compared to what the true rate of inflation is. Um, and also the government continues spending like money like crazy. Uh, we're sending more money over to Ukraine. Uh, as long as the government keeps spending money, uh, you know, inflation is going to continue going up. Labor markets remain tight, contributing to upward pressures on labor, which in turn uh, gives us upward pressure on prices. And uh, mortgage applications have plunged 41% since last year. Um, we heard they were picking up in January, but nobody is trying to get a mortgage right now. Uh, article from Wolf Street yesterday, mortgage applications plunged to the lowest level since 1995. Uh, if you go on bankrate.com, the current uh, average for a 30-year mortgage rate is 6.99%. Uh, we're knocking on the door of 7%, and it's up 24 basis points from just a week ago. Um, and this is just kind of anecdotal, but there's a subreddit called r backslash first-time homebuyers, uh, where first-time homebuyers ask questions, share their home buying journey. And I'm seeing more and more posts from people saying, you know what, we're done for now. We're, we're thrown in the towel. We're sick of getting beaten out on homes. Uh, these, uh, these interest rates are crazy. Home prices are crazy and they're not coming down. Uh, we're throwing in the towel. So it seems like a lot of potential buyers, a lot of people who have been trying to, be, who have been trying to buy for the past year, two years, three years, uh, are throwing in the towel and giving up. We always cover uh, layoffs in these videos. Uh, one of the biggest stories of the day, Facebook is expecting to lay off another 1,000 employees, at least 1,000 employees, uh, and that's on top of the 11,000 they laid off just a couple weeks ago. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Facebook had laid off 11,000 employees. They had predicted that would be all the layoffs they've been doing, they would be doing. Uh, Facebook is, uh, what they're doing right now, they're pushing a bunch of managers who were previously managers into lower roles. Uh, you guys may remember last week or two weeks ago, Zuckerberg had said he doesn't like seeing managers, managing managers, managing managers. So a lot of people who previously were managers are being pushed into lower roles. Uh, and uh, if you look at what Facebook did in just the past couple of years, from 2017 to 2022, uh, Facebook increased their headcount from 17,000 employees to 90,000 employees. Has Facebook as a platform grown that much? Have they bought that many more companies? Not really. There's a lot of people suspecting that Facebook will be trying to get back to the headcount levels of about 2018. Uh, and if that's the case, you could potentially see tens of thousands uh, more layoffs in 2023. Uh, NPR is laying off 100 workers. That's 10% of their staff. Um, and if we look at the overall tech layoffs, which we cover pretty much every day, uh, this year thus far, and again, this isn't the past year. This is uh, 
what we're not even two months into the year, 394 tech companies have laid off employees. The total number of employees laid off is 108,986. Uh, a couple other layoffs in the past 24 hours. Immutable uh, laid off 11% of their staff, and a company called Locomotion out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, laid off 100% of their staff. Uh, Google is downsizing offices, trying to save money. Uh, they're asking employees to share desks amid office downsizing. Thought this was kind of crazy. We've talked about uh, kind of like how bad crime is in the country. Uh, last week, Chicago's Mayor Lori Lightfoot was telling people, if you want to stop getting mugged, stop carrying cash. As if it's your your fault you get mugged. Uh, as if she doesn't have a responsibility to provide you with a safe city uh, where you can actually carry and use cash without being robbed. But Lori Lightfoot says, no, if you want to stop getting mugged, uh, stop carrying cash. Uh, we saw a couple months back in, was it, I think, Philadelphia, uh, a gas station was hiring armed guards with AR-15s to guard the gas station. Uh, well, now New York stores are hiring, New York City stores are hiring private security uh, who are actually using canine dogs to, to, to deter theft. Uh, they're saying a lot of people will walk in the door, see the dogs, and immediately walk out. So it seems to be doing its job. Uh, in New York City, in the past year, theft is up 35%. Uh, and in the past two years, theft is up over 100%. Uh, Zero Hedge article, subprime auto loan de delinquencies hit a 13-year high. According to Moody's, some 9.3% of auto loans extended to people with low credit scores are 30 days late, uh, the highest since 2010, according to Wall Street Journal reports. And what do you think is going to happen when a bunch of people who paid 44% more than a car was worth uh, in 2022 all of a sudden start to realize that they're behind on that car. A car isn't like a home where you need a place to live or you want to keep a roof over your head. Uh, a lot of these people will probably wind up ditching that car, maybe even going out and buying a cheaper car, which is now possible because banks and uh, loan companies uh, are now giving people second and even third loans to buy more cars, something that they wouldn't have done in the past. Uh, let's see, borrowers who took out big loans at the height of the boom are far more are, are realizing that their vehicles uh, are worth far less than they owe on the loans. Um, and those buyers are going to be sticking the lenders with uh, with those cars. Um, and the banks are going to wind up with big, big losses. Ally Financial Inc., which operates the largest auto lending business, said in January that the loans that extended between mid-2021 and mid-2022 are experiencing bigger early losses than its other loans. In the fourth quarter, the percentage of its car loans that were more than 60 days past due rose above pre uh, pre Birkhoff levels for the first time, according to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, well, I kind of touched on this one yesterday, but I didn't. I don't think I touched on exactly uh, how crazy this was. Uh, dollar store mania hits a small Kentucky town. There's a, a little town in northeastern Kentucky called Olive Hill. Uh, this is a town of 1,600 people, and they have four dollar general stores um, and two family dollar stores. Think about that: six dollar stores for a town of 1,600 people. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I know during economic downturns, a lot of people like to invest in discount grocers, uh, dollar store things like that. Uh, we've also talked about how a lot of people are shopping down. So somebody who previously maybe shopped at Whole Foods is now shopping at Aldi. Uh, not only are poor people shopping at dollar stores, but the middle class is becoming poor, and they're beginning to step to shop at dollar stores too. Uh, here's another one from yesterday. Target bets $100 million to be bigger, better, and faster than before. Uh, Target is doubling down on investing in e-commerce. They're investing $100 million to expand supply chain hubs to speed up uh, speed up the delivery times and lower the cost of delivering online orders. So they're going to put these hubs all over the country. So regardless of where you live, uh, you can get online deliveries from Target cheaper and faster. Uh, Target is likely making a bigger push into e-commerce. And, uh, you know, who knows, maybe we'll see them closing uh, brick and mortar stores here in 2023. Yesterday, we talked about the retail apocalypse, uh, about how a lot of these, uh, a lot of retailers, uh, what, what, what do you say, uh, I think Gap, um, Walmart, uh, Nordstrom, uh, Home Depot, a number of stores are going to be closing in 2023. And if we look at Black Friday this past year, it was obviously a lot more underwhelming than the media was telling us. Uh, but one thing everybody noticed is that nobody was shopping in brick and mortar stores. Most of the business was going online. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like a lot of these brick and mortar stores are going to be closing down. Uh, you know, Online commerce, e-commerce, uh, I, I feel like you can serve a lot more customers with a lot less employees. Uh, so this is going to be bad for jobs, but uh, it is what it is. 
Uh, Zero Hedge, uh, Iraq to drop the dollar for yuan in trade with China. The Iraqi Central Bank announced Wednesday that for the first time it plans to allow trade from China to be settled directly in yuan instead of U.S. dollars to improve access to foreign currency. Uh, we've been talking for months about how the, uh, the U.S. is going to lose its place as the reserve currency of the world. Um, I think ultimately something else is going to have to pop up. Is that going to be the Chinese yuan? Uh, is that going to be the Russian ruble? Is it going to be gold? Is it going to be Bitcoin? I uh, would love to hear your guys thoughts on that uh let's see so the i don't know if you guys remember there was like a salad shortage earlier this month apparently we're now learning that earlier this month there was a cyber attack on uh the giant food company dole uh temporarily shut down all their production in north america and that's actually what wound up leading to the salad shortage uh earlier this month and then just kind of the uh, the last story of the day intel cuts their dividend by 66 percent uh they're also cutting 401k matches for employees uh, company-wide pay cuts of 5%. And apparently they're also removing quarterly bonuses, which can make up 6 to 7% of employee pay. Uh, you know, a lot of people like investing in companies that pay a dividend or stocks that pay a dividend. Uh, there's kind of a group of stocks called Dividend Kings. Now, typically, uh, Dividend Kings are companies who have increased their dividend for 50 plus years. Uh, Intel, I believe, has only been paying a dividend for 20, 25, maybe 30 years tops. So technically speaking, Intel isn't a Dividend King, but a lot of people consider Intel to be a dividend king. Uh, I think this is going to make a lot of people less interested in investing in their stock uh, if you know people are investing for income or people like investing in dividend stocks. Uh, anyhow, guys, that's kind of everything we have to discuss today. Uh, you know, be sure to visit today's sponsor. Uh, link in the description box below, refersion.com. If you are an affiliate marketer, uh, sign up as an affiliate marketer. If you guys have a shop for it or a big commerce store, uh, check them out to manage and run your affiliate program there. Do me a favor, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, and opinions on everything we've discussed today. So drop a comment down below. Uh, let us know what you guys think about any of the stories today. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.